Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Dr. Nostalgia Gamer. Today I'm going to be doing the next installment in the Game Room Tour, and I will be going over my Atari 2600, as well as my Sega Genesis stuff. Alright, so just as usual, I'm going to be starting off with a quick pan of my Atari 2600 stuff, and then I'll do a slow pan so you guys can see a little bit more in detail of what I have. So, just a quick pan real quick, just to get a general idea of what I've got. Yeah, so the, I believe the Atari 2600 is my second biggest collection. <clears throat> I think I have just under 100 games in the collection total. It's like 96, 97 games, something like that. And all but one of them is loose. So definitely not a collection that I have a large box set for. All right, so let's do a slow pan of everything so we can do a quick look at everything that I have. You'll see some of them are missing labels just because, um, you know, they're kind of old. Some of these games are from the very, very early 80s. And the uh, for whatever reason, the glue on the Atari 2600 labels back in the 80s wasn't the highest quality in the world. So, <clears throat> And you'll notice that some copies of games I do have multiples of. And the reason for that is because... I am a fan of collecting label variants if I can on less valuable games or games that I can get for a decent price. I don't mind at all collecting label variants um, just because to me it may be the same game but if it's made by a different company or if it's got a different look to it then it's worth shelling out a couple extra dollars just to have it. You'll notice a lot of Atari 2600 games are space based because that was sort of the big thing in gaming back then. Alright, well that was the quick pan, so next I will do my top 10 most valuable. For the purposes of being accurate, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys this. I had mentioned that I had one complete in box Atari game, and I'm proud to say that that's actually Star Raiders. This is one of the big box Atari games. Um, the cool part about this uh, particular box game is that it's a big box version, so most Atari, you can see how big that is, most Atari boxes are about half this size because this particular one also includes the Star Raiders um, uh, video touchpad, which comes included. So this is a pretty cool little little box, and actually mine specifically, I've got both of the internal boxes, the one that the game came in, the one that the controller came in, and then obviously I've got the big box on the outside, but this actually is pretty cool. It, it has the original receipt from where the person bought it, 1982 I believe, and it actually has a little piece of paper inside of it where the person who had played it had taken and written down notes on how to play the game. They even drew pictures of the uh, spaceships and stuff in the game. So really cool. I'm glad to have this. I picked it up for super cheap. I think I got it for like a couple dollars, like a dollar or two dollars or something like that. So just for the purpose of being fully accurate, I wanted to show you guys this as well. All right, so now it's time for the top 10 most valuable Atari 2600 games in my collection. Like I said, just for full accuracy, technically my most valuable Atari 2600 game is the Complete in Box Star Raiders I showed you earlier, which is worth about $25 to $30 as of the last time I checked. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So my number one most valuable Atari 20... Uh, sorry, my number 10 most valuable Atari 2600 game is... Commando Raid by US Games. This is essentially a copy of Missile Command. It's a very similar idea. Graphics are actually a little bit better with this than they were in Com Missile Command though, because you can see that there's colors to the skyline and things like that. It's the same general idea, slightly coded slightly differently, but yeah, so this guy is worth about $8 loose. Next up is a classic and one of my favorite games to play on the system, Mario Brothers. So this is obviously a game um, by Nintendo. This was one of the very first, I think this was an, ar an almost an exact arcade port. This was one of the first Mario games. They actually refer to him as Mario. So this game is obviously a lot of fun. Anybody that has ever played a Mario game has probably played this particular game at some point if you know anything about Mario. Um, this game is worth about $10 loose. Next up is <coughs> Tapeworm by Spectrovision. 
Uh, this game is uh, a really cool game. It's, it's kind of a classic style. Um, it's very basic and simple to play, but it's, it is a lot of fun. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a good game. I remember playing a game like this on my mom's PC at work. So this is a pretty cool little game. Um, and this guy's worth about $10 as well. Next up is Space Attack, which is a basically a complete and total ripoff of Space Invaders on the Atari 2600. In fact, if I remember correctly from playing this game, I don't think that this game is at all different than Space Invaders. And this is put out by Mattel. So this is like an exact replica of Space Invaders. Um, maybe, I mean, there are some differences, but it's almost an exact replica of the same game. And this guy's worth about $10. Next up is Stargate by, let's see, Atari? Yeah, Atari made this one. Um, actually, no, sorry, Williams made this game. Um, so as you can see, mine's got <laughs> Bonnie, your game is here. Somebody's got, wrote their name on it. But anyway, so Stargate is a pretty cool little game. Um, I think it's, I think if I remember correctly, it's very similar to uh, da -da -da -da. Defender. So that's the thing about Atari is that when a game concept sold well, they would oftentimes rip it off, <laughs> and, and that's what you would get. But yeah, so Stargate is worth about $10 as well. Next up is a really obscure game, and I knew this one was going to be worth a little bit more money when I found it, just because of the, the, the concept. But So this is Tax Avoiders on the Atari 2600, um, and it's kind of fun. You can see that the, the, the background is actually a, a 1040 uh, tax form. Um, you can see that there's a, a, like a sniper with a, a thing in the middle with that guy. So this game is really weird. I still haven't completely figured out exactly the point of the game. I know that you play as this little eight... Uh, uh, you play as this little bit character that runs around collecting money and trying to avoid something. I think the idea is that you are playing a tax avoider, I think is the idea, and you're trying to prevent from getting caught by, um, like, I guess bankers or something? I don't know. Anyway, so this game is worth about $10 as well. Very obscure, cool game. It's got a really cool label to it. And it looks like this one is made by... Conceived by Daryl Wagner, a licensed tax consultant and former IRS revenue agent. Developed by Todd Clark Holm, an independent investment advisor. Registered with the SEC. Designed by, designed by John Simmons. Programmed by Dunhill Electronics. Produced by American Video Games. So that's really cool. So actually, people who worked on this game were actually IRS investigators. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we have Planet Patrol by Spectre Video. This is actually a really good game um, on the console. Um, not a whole lot to say about this one. It, it is, it's pretty fun, pretty cool game, and this guy's worth about $12. Like I said, a lot of space games on the Atari 2600. Next up is another game that I, when I saw it, I knew it was going to be worth a little bit more because it seemed a little bit obscure, but that is Private Eye on the Atari 2600. Um, this one's made. This is an Activision game. Um, this guy, the idea is that you play as a private eye, who I, I guess, based off of playing the game, is going around his local town and trying to discover secrets about his his neighbors and stuff. Um, he's trying to discover information and bring it back to the, the police station. So that's that's a pretty cool little interesting game. Uh, this is my uh, soon. Uh, third most valuable loose Atari 2600 game, and it's worth about $15. Next up is Comic Creeps by Telesis. Um, <coughs> this game's pretty cool. I like it. Um, it it's... I, I can't remember exactly, but I think it's kind of a Space Invaders type of game. I don't remember for sure, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, so this is a this is a pretty fun little game. Another game by Telesis. Uh, I noticed this company in general, a lot of their games are worth a little bit more. They must not have made as many as a lot of other companies. I've noticed the Telesis label tends to relate to more valuable games. But yeah, so this guy is worth about $15 loose, which is a lot for an Atari 2600 game. And next and final, if you guys have seen my review video, you've already seen this game in action, but that is Tapper. This was put out by Bally Midway, and uh, as I discussed in my video, I thought it was interesting because um, it's a trademark of Bally Midway Company. But the video game copyright belongs, sorry, the video game copyright is Bally Midway. Um, 
it's and it even specifies that the Atari 2600 is a trademark of Atari. It says package and program belongs to Sega, which is really weird to me. And then it says that Mountain Dew is a registered trademark at Mountain Dew, and I remember being confused by that because I always thought in this game that you were playing as a bartender, but apparently this was the one released where you were actually playing as a um, person serving Mountain Dew because they didn't want to make it as if they were trying to sell alcohol to kids because kids typically play these games. So, but yeah, so th this is a pretty cool game. It's cool to see a Sega logo on a on a um, on an older video game. But yeah, so that's that's Tapper by Midway. This game is worth about twenty dollars loose on the Atari 2600, and it is my most valuable Atari 2600 game. The next up is the Sega Genesis stuff. So let me do a quick pan of that. Oh, it's the loose stuff. Let's do a quick pan of the box of stuff that I own. Okay, so now I'm going to do a slow pan of the Genesis stuff and get a better idea of what I actually own. And I, I have about 60 Genesis games, I believe, and the total value of the entire package is a little bit under $450 for the entire package between the, uh, um, the, uh, loot, between the loose stuff and the box stuff. Okay, so let's move on to the boxed items. Let's see what I've got here. I ended up, I, my local video game store, <clears throat> um, picked up a big, big collection of complete and box Genesis stuff, and I managed to get a lot of stuff. Mostly sports games, but a whole lot of stuff in general, and I got it super, super cheap. Like, I paid a couple dollars a piece for most of these games, so I was excited to get that kind of a deal on them, but... Um, and that's actually how my Gen Genesis collection actually grew, is because I found that store that had a bunch of stuff for pretty cheap, and I managed to buy a whole bunch of it over time from, from that same guy. So next up is my most valuable, 10 top most valuable Sega Genesis games. So to start it off, first up is Tecmo Super Bowl on the Genesis, made by Tecmo, obviously. Pretty much just your typical, um, typical football game. Um, it does, I do have the manual as well as the game with this one. And this guy is worth about $10 complete. Next we have Echo the Dolphin. This one was put out by, is it Sega? Yeah, Sega. Sega released this game. Echo the Dolphin. It's, it's, a, it's a really pretty game. It's got really beautiful graphics and really pretty um, music to it as well. Very soothing game, but it, it's very strange and kind of difficult to play. And I do have this one complete with the manual and the, uh, the game as well. And this guy's also worth about $10. Next up, I have Mortal Kombat 2 on the Sega Genesis. Mortal Kombat is probably one of the most... Um, played titles on the Genesis. It's probably one of the favorites. It's right up there with um, probably Sonic as being probably one of the favorite games on the system. Um, this was put out by Acclaim. And this one, unfortunately, I'm missing the manual, but I do have the game and the case. And this guy, without the manual, is worth about $10. Next up, we have probably the most classic game on the, on the Genesis in general, and that is the original Sonic the Hedgehog. This game is <coughs> loads of fun, and was the reason why it was, you know, sold so big, and the reason why it was probably the be one of the better selling games on the Sega Genesis. So, really cool game, a lot of fun, very classic. Um, I really like this game. Um, very simple gameplay, but it is a, a lot of fun to play. And this guy I do have complete, um, and it is worth about $10. 
Next is WWF Raw on the Sega Genesis. This game was also put out by Acclaim. <coughs> Typical kind of wrestling game. I am not a big fan at all of wrestling games, but you know, I'm, a, I'm a more of a completionist collector, so I don't buy stuff for, for nothing. And this actually is missing the um, the manual, and you can pretty cool. So this is I didn't I don't actually remember seeing this. This is actually a ad inside of it for the Interactor, which is a basically sort of like a um uh it's a vest that vibrates and stuff when you play so that it feels like you're in the game so that's kind of interesting um yeah so this doesn't have the manual and this guy i had listed at about ten dollars in the condition it's in Next up, we got another uh, wrestling game, WWF Royal Rumble. Um, I think this game is a little bit more popular. Man, that is a rape face, dude. That is really freaky. Anyway, so so here is the that game. Oh, I'm just thrown off by that. Also, let's see. This one was made by Flying Edge. So this one was made by a different a different company. But yeah, so pretty cool game. I also had this one complete, and this guy is worth about twelve dollars. Next up, we have sort of an obscure game, but it is a lot of fun, and that is Cool Spot, put out by Virgin Games. Now, when I first got this game, even the guy that sold it to me the, at the shop was like, he kept calling it C8L Spot, and I thought it was an 8-2, and I kept looking up this game, and I could not find it. And I realized that those were two O's, and it's Cool Spot. And then, obviously, I put it together with the sunglasses and the, the dude riding the, the surfboard. So, this is kind of a strange game. Um, you play as a, a little spot. Um literally a red dot that is um, trying to rescue his spot buddies who have been um, snatched by villains and you it, it's kind of, it's pretty fun though it's it's definitely an interesting game um, probably one of the more interesting and fun games that I have on the Genesis and I do have this guy complete as well um, this game's pretty cool I picked it up super cheap too uh, and this guy is worth about twelve dollars. Next up is another pretty classic game. I've got Street Fighter 2, but unfortunately, specifically, this is the Special Champion Edition. Um, I believe that the regular edition of this game is worth like twice as much or something complete. But yeah, so it's just, it's the Street Fighter game. Pretty cool. <coughs> classic Street Fighter. A um, lot of fun. Um, complicated in my opinion. I've never been a huge fighting game fan, but um, I mean, I don't I don't dislike them, but I've just never been a huge fan of the fighting games. And I do also have this game complete, and this guy is worth about $12 as well. Next up, we have Mortal Kombat 3 on the Genesis. Um, awesome game, made by Williams. <coughs> um, rated mature, because there's lots of blood and nastiness in it. Um, this game, this game's a lot of fun too. It's one of my more valuable. This is my second most valuable uh, Sega Genesis game that I own. Um, this guy is worth about twelve dollars, and it is complete as well. And finally, my most valuable Sega Genesis game that I own is Frogger. This game was made by Hasbro and Majestico Sales. Um, this is definitely an arcade port style game, and this is actually the only, um, uh, not the only, one of three, I think, of the cardboard box versions of the Genesis games. These are definitely a little bit harder to find because just like on the NES where, you know, these things got torn up and trashed, it's, it's a little bit harder to find these in good shape. But yeah, so, so I got Frogger here, pretty cool game, and a pretty cool, pretty funny title there too, Why Did the Frog Cross the Road? Um... But yeah, so this is a fun game. It's definitely a classic, and I do own this game complete as well. I've got the, the manual and the game both in here. So, pretty cool game. Lots of fun and definitely a classic. And this guy is worth about $15 complete. Well, that's it for this episode of Dr. Nostalgia Gamer. I hope you guys enjoyed this installment of the Game Room Tour, and I will catch you guys next time.